the Total Sports Network, presents College Basketball 1985. From the Civic Center in Springfield, Massachusetts, it's the NCAA Division II Men's Basketball Championship for 1985. A matchup of the Jackrabbits from South Dakota State against the Gamecocks from Jacksonville State in Alabama. And a warm welcome to the Civic Center in Springfield, Massachusetts, the birthplace of basketball for the last six years, host to this championship, the Men's Division II Basketball Championship on the line here tonight. A very pleasant welcome to Springfield. I'm John Sanders along with Dick Vitale. We get set for this championship game. South Dakota State led by some fine inside play by people who aren't as big as you think they should be. Let's start with Mark Tetzlaff, for example. He averages almost 19 points a game. He's 6'7". He has to do the job inside. John, he's a very active player. He really can move without the basketball. Had 32 points in the semifinal game, and he's really an all-star performer. He's made many, many all-star teams. He's the most prolific scorer in the history of the school, and he's the guy that they're going to have to neutralize if they want to get number 31 in a row, Jacksonville State. Well, he also averages 8.7 rebounds per game. He is the big man we'll be watching inside. But we also have some people we're going to keep our eyes on outside, and we're talking about Melvin Allen for the Gamecocks of Jacksonville State. Jacksonville State has won 30 games in a row. They might be crying out, bring on the Hoyas, the guy that makes them go, the little guy that really penetrates all kinds of quickness, Melvin Allen. He's super quick. They tell me, they said, Dick Vitale, he should be on your all blurred team. Well, he averages almost 17 points a game. He also averages seven and a half assists a game. But you've already touched on it. The Gamecocks want to run the basketball. The Jackrabbits are not going to want to run it. Bill Jones of Jacksonville State, he knows he has to use the whole 94 feet. He's going to pressure full court. He's going to try to create a fast-paced game. On the other side, South Dakota State wants to play a little bit slower pace game. They want to get the ball inside, utilize great shot selection, a lot of patience. John, there's something special about a national championship. For these kids out here today, this is their roses. This is what it's all about in terms of winning a title, going for the gold trophy, and it's special. And we will We'll be back to meet the starters for Jacksonville State, the Gamecocks, and also the starters for the Jackrabbits of South Dakota State. NCAA Division II Championship coming your way in just a minute. Well, welcome to Springfield, Massachusetts. Jacksonville State University ranked number two in the nation coming into this championship game behind Virginia Union, a team that was undefeated until they got to the NCAAs against South Dakota State, a team ranked number nine. Let's meet the starting lineups for both teams. And to Good do evening, that, everyone. we'll go to our starting, our PA announcer, Jim O'Hearn. Here's Jim. The birthplace of basketball. Tonight, the NCAA Division II men's championship game. The designated visiting team tonight is the South Dakota State University Jackrabbits. The Jackrabbits have done a great this job this year. This is third time in the Final Four. Won the Designated championship back in 1963. Tonight, the Jacksonville State University Gamecocks from Jacksonville, Alabama, last year's runners-up. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here are your starting lineups. Starting at forward for South Dakota State, a senior, six foot seven, number 55, Mike Round. For Jacksonville State, starting at forward, a junior, six five, number 44, Robert Spurgeon. Starting at forward for South Dakota State, forward number 41. 6'5", junior Mark Schultz. At forward for Jacksonville, number 42, 6'6", senior Robert Guyton. For South Dakota State, starting at center tonight, a senior, 6'7", number 43, Mark Tetzlaff. For Jacksonville at center, a junior, 6'6", six, six, number 54, Keith McKellar. Starting at guard tonight for South Dakota State, 15, senior, 6'1", Derek Wordlaw. 
For Jacksonville, starting at guard, a senior, six foot number 12, Earl Warren. And rounding out the South Dakota State starting lineup, at guard, number 31, junior, 6'2", Tom McDonald. And rounding out the Jacksonville State starters, at guard, senior, six foot number four, Melvin Allen. The coach for the visiting South Dakota State team, Gene Zolk. The coach for the home Jacksonville State team, Bill Jones. A couple of veteran teams in this championship game for 1985. The officials are from the Big Ten. Eric Harmon on the left, London Bradley on the right. They are Division I officials. This is the NCAA Division II championship. We'll have South Dakota State taking on Jacksonville State here in Springfield, Massachusetts, right after this. Some of the fans of Jacksonville State University from Jacksonville, Alabama, they light it up to the tune of 87 points a game. South Dakota State averaging 71 points a game. There are the starters in this game. Keep your eye on Tetzlaff inside for South Dakota State and watch Allen outside for Jacksonville State. But also Jacksonville State, Dick, has some big people inside. It'll be interesting to see how Tetzlaff does against the big physical size of the Gamecocks and they control the opening tip right to Allen. I look for them to zone, John, and immediately they go into a 2-3 zone. It's like a 2-1-2 setup, and the zone is utilized to slow down the pace of the game. Warren in the corner swings it back to Melvin Allen, a senior from Tony, Alabama. Robert Spurgeon, this is a veteran group. They've played together for about three years now. They go inside quickly. On the follow shot, it's going to come up short. Guyton took the first shot. Finally, a foul is called. Bill Jones told me today, he said, if they zone us, which we think they will start out to do, John, we're going to attack inside. We're going to go to McKellar, and we're going to go to Guyton. We're going to try to flash inside. There's the little jumper from the baseline. And it was Spurgeon who got the rebound and showing their strength inside right away. Spurgeon, a very powerful player. They really put some physical specimens. Their front court looks like they're ready to play in the NFL. So Spurgeon. Cedartown, Georgia, a junior. He's a 70% free throw shooter, John. They go to immediately to full court pressure, real hard traps, trying to deny the ball inbounds. Petzlaff almost out of bounds, lost it, but then gets it back because Keith McKellar could not hang on. I believe both officials are going to allow a lot of contact. Both guys work in the Big Ten, and they're making an adjustment. They have to work with two guys versus the three. Petzlaff to Wordlaw, who gets the basket. Derek Wordlaw gets his first two. A release out of a 1-4 setup, John. Wordlaw, hey, he played in high school with a fair player, a guy by the name of Isaiah Thomas at St. Joe's in Chicago, Illinois. Spurgeon is number 44. Allen's first shot rolls off. Here's Wordlaw again against Allen. Draws the foul. And Wordlaw hits the deck. Wordlaw last night in the semifinal game, John, he was 0 for 6, and that's uncharacteristic of him, and he was 5 for 7 from the free throw line. He's down a little bit, got bang going strong to the basket. His dad played at Iowa University, and he was telling me today, he said, I was a sophomore when Isaiah Thomas was a senior, and his eyes just lit up talking about playing with Isaiah. Wordlaw will stay in the game, makes his way back to the foul line. Gene Zolk talking things over with his assistant as we go back and take another look. They release Wordlaw. There's the break, takes it up to the goal. He gets like undercut, not deliberately, but there's the contact and earns the two shot opportunity. Eric Harmon right on the call. Wordlaw with uh, those five points in the semifinal game, well below his average, and that's one of the reasons that South Dakota State had some problems in their semifinal game against Kentucky Wesleyan. Wordlaw with four points. He has all of the scoring so far for South Dakota State. And getting the roll at the other end is Earl Warren. They don't waste any time. Warren's been a starter. Quick players, got long arms. Look at the pressure. Real tough pressure. Got a flash to the open area of the floor. Correct what I said about uh, South Dakota State. Their semifinal game was Mount St. Mary from Maryland. It was uh, Jacksonville advancing with their win over Kentucky Wesleyan by 11 points in the semifinals. This is the championship game from long range. McDonald can't hit. Got bodies everywhere. Wordlaw picks up the foul. 
Tom McDonald's an interesting player, averaged over 35 points a game in high school. He was a scoring machine, scored over 2,000 points at Chisholm High School in Minnesota, Minneapolis. Played for his papa. His father was the coach. He said, son, take me to the winner's circle. And he just used to let it fly. Keep your eye on Bill Jones. He has a set of towels he will use on the bench. And those towels are not just for decoration. They dictate the, the defense that his team will be in. Notice how they're trying to flash to open areas against the 2-3 zone. They're not a good perimeter shooting team, John. They got to get the ball to the inside. Spurgeon takes the outside shot, misses. Down low to follow and lay it home is Robert Guyton. Guyton's a big, strong horse. They're not getting back defensively. This time, Wardlaw will pick up the foul. What Gene Zulk's trying to do right now, he's trying to have his club beat them before they set the pressure up with the baseball pass. There's the baseball pass. Three-quarter court, Wordlaw releases, takes it to the goal. No doubt about it, defensive player there, and Eric Harmon with the call, with the charge. And Wordlaw sits down. Into the lineup is Arvis Young from Detroit, Michigan, a senior. He was starting earlier in the year, John, and they made a lineup change, and bringing him off the bench. Trying to save the ball was Mark Schultz. Now, Mark, his hands, you get a shot of his hands. His hands are all taped up. He's all banged up. He knocks around in there pretty good. Number 41, Mark Schultz for the Jackrabbits. There's the 2-1-2 two -two zone. Interesting backcourt with Allen and Warren. The last team to have a backcourt of Allen and Warren was back in the late 60s at UCLA. And they had a fierce center by the name of Alcindor. Lucius Allen. Turn around, comes up short. But controlling the boards underneath and laying it in is Robert Spurgeon. Really beating him on a glass, beating him with the second shot. There's the tough full court pressure. There's the turnover. They had problems last night in the semifinal game and were lucky to get out with the win, South Dakota State, against Jimmy Phelan's Mount St. Mary's team against the pressure. 17 minutes and 14 seconds remaining in the first half. South Dakota State for Coach Gene Zulk has decided to take a timeout. Our score here, it is Jacksonville on top by three in Springfield. We take a look right now, John, against the full court pressure. He's trying to get McDonald the diagonal pass. There's the strong double up. They use Spurgeon and Guyton on the front of it. They're big people, and tries to throw the diagonal pass, but throws it wildly out of bounds. Well, as you pointed out, they have been trying to beat that press by getting at the half court quicker. Now, they did have a problem, uh, South Dakota State, last night in their semifinal game. In the second half, Mount St. Mary's went all out pressure, and they almost pulled it out. Jimmy Phelan's club were really, was really coming after them with the pressure, and Bill Jones, his club lives by the pressure because the pressure really ultimately gets them a lot of scores offensively with steals. Uh, Jacksonville State certainly has a little better athlete, but they really are playing against a team in South Dakota State that really demonstrates what the team concept is all about. Shot selection, usually play outstanding defense, and they have to pay, play a little bit more patient game, John. Seven to four, the Gamecocks on top. They'll have the basketball. As we come back to Springfield, Massachusetts, the birthplace of basketball, sixth consecutive year that this fine city has hosted this championship tournament, and I think they found a home here. It's the Division II championship, last year's winner, Central Missouri State. Lynn Nance, the coach, his name's been banning around for the Washington job. Johnny rotated into a man-to-man -man after the timeout. And Allen took that extra step before he put the ball on the floor. His li eyes light up when he sees the man-to-man -man because Allen's got great quickness. As I said earlier, many people say, Dick, pick him for your all-blur team. Allen with 24 points in the semifinal victory for Jacksonville State. Jacksonville State starts pressing John from the minute they step in the locker room and lace their shoes up. Arvis Young deflected out of bounds. The Jackrabbit will control. There you see the coach, Bill Jones, who spent some time in the Pirates minor league organization after he played at Jacksonville State. His 11th season there, both coaches in their 11th year. Coach Zulk, 186 wins for him. So it's Gene Zulk against Bill Jones. And both were really at their alma maters and both were outstanding players when they played on the collegiate level. McDonald from way out, it rolls in. Great range by McDonald. He's got a nice touch. They don't waste any time running the ball up the court. McKellar back to Warren. They like to run a sideline break, John. Man-to-man -man defense, playing soft, playing soft on the guards, trying to play tough inside. Now Spurgeon. 
No clock, remember, in the NCAA championship. So they'll set the offense up again. Leading by a point, it's 7-6, to six, Jacksonville State. Allen draws the foul. Harvest Young picks up his first. Allen's a very, very hockey kind of player, John. He wants the ball, especially when the game is on the line. Yesterday, he had to really make some big plays against Kentucky Wesley in a semifinal game where they wouldn't be here, and he just took over late in the game as we take a look at Gene Zolt pointing out some assignments. Melvin Allen started his college basketball career at Alabama Huntsville. He's a shooter at the line. He is an interesting story. Melvin Allen played at Sparkman High School, John, and in high school his team was 31-0 and then lost the state championship game. Here he is in college. His team loses the opening game to Belmont Abbey. That's where Al McGuire started his coaching career. They lose their first game and they've won 30 in a row, the best winning streak in the nation. Last year they were bumped out of this tournament by the eventual champions from Central Missouri State in Warrensburg. The answering Schultz rolls out. They got the break that time. Schultz just missed the shot. They're doing a great job attacking the pressure. Allen. Oh, oh. Schultz with a rebound. Good they rebound. Kick it out to Young. Jackrabbit's running a little more than we expected, I think. I'm surprised at the pace of the game and the tempo right now that South Dakota State's playing out. They back it out now because the tempo really is what the Jack Jackrabbits don't want to get up and down the floor against the game cops. Tried to go uh, alley oop that time. Couldn't. Allen at the other end. Foul will go on Robert Spurgeon. He's big inside, 6'5. Robert Guyton at 6'6. Keith McKellar at 6'6, but they've all got big bodies, too. They got big bodies, John, and they got great team balance. They have five starters that all score in double figures. An interesting note about all five starters, they have all scored over a thousand points in their careers, and that is tremendous team balance. They have been waiting for this moment, their chance at the championship for quite a while because they have played together, felt they should have been here before. Now they finally made it to the championship game. Went undefeated in their conference, which is the Gulf, Gulf South. There's the first move by Tetzlaff. That's what he likes to do. This spinning move inside. That was the first time he's been able to really touch the ball and score in area. The foul will go on Robert Guyton. It's an offensive foul on Guyton. I'm really impressed with the way they run the basketball up the court at Jacksonville State. There is no time wasted, John. They really try to take advantage of their strengths, which is great quickness and tremendous athletic ability. Mike Round with the inbound play, and they quickly have a three on two. Jump shot is too hard by Arvis Young, gets it back. Not good shot selection by Arvis Young. He's a slasher, he's not a good perimeter shooter. Down low, laying at home, is McKellar. Keith McKellar gets his first basket. Now what's happening right now is the court is starting to open up too much. There are too many gaps because of the pace of the game. A three-point lead for Jacksonville State, 11 to 8. We have 14.30 remaining first half, and we have a foul. Robert Guyton picks up the personal. Checking into the lineup is number 22, Pat Williams now for Jacksonville State, a junior from Birmingham who sees a lot of playing time, along with Kelvin Bryant. We'll see some of him as the game goes along. Pat Williams picks up his second foul. Pat Williams is a junior college transfer from out of Jeffersonville State. He originally verbally committed to the University of Alabama in Birmingham. He's from Hayes High School in Birmingham, Alabama, along with a guy that's playing for Alabama now by the name of Buck Johnson. And then both of them went elsewhere, and I know Gene Bartow was mighty sad when Buck Johnson ended up in a Crimson Tide Alabama uniform. Tom McDonald gets it to Round, and Round is a role player. Shoots very seldom. Schultz along the baseline. Tetzlaff trying to follow and does. They really want to go inside to Tetzlaff and inside to Schultz. Tetzlaff reminds me of a little version of a kid I had here a few years ago, John Ebeling, who starred for Florida Southern in the national championships. Pat Williams knocks in his first basket, 13-10, a three-point edge for Jacksonville State. There's the pressure. They get it to Round. If Round shoots three times in a game, they ice his arm. He's a complimentary player. He's a kid that's a good passer, good rebounder, six rebounds a game. Williams comes off the bench and immediately hits the open J. And McDonald, another long-range jumper. Now you can see why he averaged 35 points a game in high school. He was a scoring machine. Williams can't answer. We've got bodies banging inside, and we've got a foul called. Away from the basketball. 
We've got Bill Jones, very active on the sideline. Very friendly guy, very proud to be where he's at at his alma mater. Coached two years at North Alabama and has an outstanding record since he's been here with the uh, Gamecocks of Jacksonville State. Into the lineup, Bob Latticer, number five. He was a starter much of last year. Is the sixth man. Latticer had 15 points in the semifinals. He was a key to the win by South Dakota State. South Dakota State and Jacksonville State hooked up in the championship here. Allen penetrates and scores. Tremendous body control by Melvin, Melvin Allen. Sees an opening in the defense, keeps his head up, has good vision, takes it strong to the basket. He's an exciting little player. Latticer gets it in the forecourt. 15-12, a three-point edge for Jacksonville State against South Dakota State. This is the men's NCAA Division II championship from Springfield, Massachusetts. Latticer in the corner goes inside. Schultz gets some room and lays it home. They can't allow Schultz to post up inside. They can't allow Schultz or Tetzlaff to get that kind of position. Jacksonville State by one. Low. And a foul called. A spinning move inside by Earl Warren. But Tom McDonald picked up the personal foul. Warren averaged over 14 points a game, John. He's a six-foot player, likes to post inside. He can play on a small forward slot. He's a great jumper, has long arms, anticipates well in the pressure. And to the line, Earl Warren, the senior. State of Alabama has produced a lot of good high school players. I know the Auburns and the Alabama Universities and South Alabama with the Terry Catledges. There's so many great athletes now coming out from down south and especially in Alabama. Well, if you're Bill Jones, how do you get those players to Jacksonville State instead of Auburn or Alabama? Well, he had a great philosophy. He told us today, he said, I let the big fish come in, get what they want, and I take the leftovers. I want you said to talk that. a little bit about the difference between the caliber of play, Division II and Division I, as we go along. Hey, McDonald is way outside, and that's where he likes to play. They're going to get in the wings and gaps against the 2-3 zone. You should have good wing jumpers. That's a little bit too deep, John. That's like 25 feet. Williams comes up with the rebound. Takes it all the way and scores. They're a driving, slashing basketball team. They're not a kind of club that's going to stand and shoot the stationary jump shot. And look at that full court pressure. Catch lap. There it is. Intercepted. The foul is on Mark Schultz. So Mark picks up his second personal foul. Gene Zunk's club right now is struggling a great deal against the pressure, John. They have to be able to post the guy to the open floor. We take a look at the full court pressure. There's the hard, tough trap right now. They put a lot of pressure on that trap. They reverse the basketball, but it's deflected. There's the bump inside. Schultz bumps him. London Bradley right on the call. Well, back to the lineup comes Derek Wordlaw. Derek went out, hurt himself a little bit early. He was very active, but the other end of the court early went out. John, there are three things you basically want to do against that kind of pressure. One, you want to be able to have a guy you can reverse the ball back to one step off the line of the ball. Two, you want to be able to post someone up to the middle of the floor. And three, you want to be able to have a diagonal man that you can throw the ball diagonally against the trap so that you can bring the ball over to the weak side. Warren is four for four at the foul line. Six points for the senior. Now they change the look of their pressure. They go to a 1-3-1 one, one, half-court trap. Biggest lead of the game so far, 21-14. Latticer down low. Won't go. Schultz rebounds and scores. Schultz is a heady player. He's a garbage man. Plays around the basket. Comes up with a loose ball, converts it, and scores. Pat Williams looks inside. 3-2 zone. Latticer putting a lot of pressure out at the point. He played an outstanding game last night. Warren goes back to Allen. And North Central Conference that they won. South Dakota State is a very competitive conference. Spurgeon off the lane with a hook shot. No good. Rebound Schultz. Look at Schultz banging inside. Schultz is 6'5", a junior. There's the 2-3 zone. You want to be able to drive, but you don't want to pick up your dribble like you just did. Excellent zigzag pass, John. Excellent move. You throw the ball into the post area, zigzag it out to the weak side. And Wordlaw, who was 0 for 6 yesterday, comes up with a big deuce from the wing, and that's got to help his game psychologically. He has six points. The lead is three for Jacksonville State. Earl Warren goes back to Allen. Allen has been a little bit quiet so far. Here's Williams. Well, the zone has neutralized him. It's taken away his driving ability. His eyes got really big when he saw the man-to-man -man for about a minute or two. Pat Williams from downtown. It's short. Rebounded by Tetzlaff. Kicks it ahead to Latticer. 
Latticer for the layup and hit. That good judgment right there. One on one, going the full length of the court. I believe they're better off if they went five on five in a half court game. Allen gets, gives it off to Kelvin Bryant, who gets his first basket. The freshman from Atlanta. I really believe that, John. I believe that this basketball team right here, South Dakota State's got to attack five against five and try to utilize a few more passes before they shoot the ball. Latticer from outside. It's short. Williams goes high for the rebound. Back come the fighting Gamecocks, leading by five and looking for more. They don't need any shot clock, John. Well, you don't average 87 points a game unless you move it up and down the court and put it up toward the basket. They run, they press, and they shoot. Very exciting style of play. I'm sure their fans have to love this kind of play. And they really love the bottom line, 30 consecutive wins. McDonald Lattisar goes all the way across to Wordlaw. McDonald from way out in front, bending, bending off. McDonald's picking up his dribble a little bit too soon. He could step up a little closer there, giving him a range at the top of the circle. Allen, low to Warren, missed the shot. Latticer chases it down. Ahead to Wordlaw. He'll slow it down just a bit. But the pace pretty hectic so far. 23-18. Latticer from outside. Yes. Latticer comes right off the bench, steps right into the gap. The wing area against the 2-3 zone, John, on both sides will be wide open for that jumper if you get good guard penetration from your point guard. 23-20. The lead is three for Jacksonville State. The Gamecocks against the Jackrabbits. They're 3-2 zone, trying to pack inside. It's like a 1-2-2. Some call it a 3-2 zone. They want to try to shut down their inside attack. Right now, Spurgeon and Kelvin Bryant are the inside attack, along with Pat Williams. But Williams is playing a wing. Kelvin goes to Spurgeon. And Williams will shoot from the corner too hard. Spurgeon follows. Can't hit. There's another follow and home by Kelvin Bryant. Kelvin Bryant's got good legs. He's the best jumper on the team, a freshman from out of Columbia High School in Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta. Year in and year out produces a lot of great high school players. This year, Cedric Henderson is now starring for Georgia. McDonald. His team down by five. Latticer will shoot. It's going to be way short. Picked out of the air by Kelvin Bryant. And back comes Allen. Melvin will shoot and score. Melvin, Melvin Allen has about 17-foot range. He has great penetration ability. Right now, they got to slow the game down just a little bit. I think McDonald's getting the signal from his coach to slow it down a little bit. Latticer. Wordlaw from the side. Followed by Tetzlaff won't go. Schultz is in there. Comes up with the ball. And they call an offensive foul on Mark Schultz. He will head to the bench because that's three personal fouls. That's a big loss. They really need all the size and strength and experience inside to attack the McCullers, the Spurgeons, and the kind of people that Jacksonville State puts on that front court. Mike Round will take his spot. He has three personal fouls. Jacksonville State up by seven. It's 27-20 here in the NCAA Division II championship game. We still have 8.06 left in the first half. Schultz now takes the ball up strong, number 41, a very active player. And we watch Tetzlaff inside once, twice, goes up again. That's why he is the leading scorer and rebounder in the history of the university. An outstanding performer, a very aggressive attacking player. Early shooting, fairly even. Both teams with nine, or rather uh, Jacksonville with nine, South Dakota. 10 field goals, so the shooting is fairly even thus far. It's even, John, but it's not really very effective because there's not enough patience on the floor right now to get what we talk about in basketball, a good shot. Shot selection is very questionable right now early in the game. Rebounding edge to Jacksonville State, 14 to 8. We have 8.04 to play in the first half. The Gamecocks trying to win their first championship. They are here in the final four for the first time ever. Felt time they out. should have been here before. Timeout, John, and they change to a man-to-man uh, -man defense. Come out of their 3-2 zone. Pat Williams, Latticer picks him up. Warren is guarded by McDonald. Gene Zelk changes defenses after a timeout. A little bit of Dean Smith in them. And you can see Allen brings it back out to set up a new offense now that they know they're in the man-to-man uh, -man defense. Latticer is all over. Williams. This is Warren. They're really playing with three guards right now with Williams, Allen, and also Warren in the backcourt. 
Warren is guarded by McDonald. They're running like a 2-1-2 two -two set, trying to get a structured set play out of it. It's a good call by Bill Jones. Settles his club down, looking for the good shot. And it came off. Kelvin excellent. Bryant got it. Six points for him. That was excellent execution, John. Now he takes the pressure off, changes the rhythm of the game, and is going to pick up right now. Half court, 2-3 zone. 29-20. The lead is nine. The biggest lead of the game thus far. All the way across the word line. They have different looks to their 2-3 zone. They play it a little differently. Foul inside on Earl Warren, who is banging with Tetzlaff. That's a smart move. He taps the official. He says, good call. Not a bad call, Eric Harmon. He says, pretty good call, but remember me next time that I was good to you. Gene Zulk, very active on the sideline, standing up. Really another guy that was really so cooperative today as we look at Bill Jones. So McDonald sets it up. A nine-point lead for Jacksonville State. South Dakota State University with the ball. The Jackrabbits. He's got to drive right into the seam. See how he picks up his dribble and gets himself in trouble? That's a no-no to all the kids that are watching. You don't want to pick up your dribble. You want to keep it alive. Williams going for the steal, but got the ball with his foot. I got a kick out of McDonald telling me about how his dad gave him the green light and let him shoot it in high school, scoring 35.5 a game. Tetzlaff gets the roll. Tetzlaff, very active, John, like we talked about on the top of the show. Knows how to spot an opening and get free inside. McKellar. <laughs> Foul is on Latticer. McKellar with a little bit of a move in the lane. He cleared the way himself with his own body. Let's go back on the last basket by Mark Tetzlaff and show you what, what Dick is talking about when he talks about the way Tetzlaff is able to move, get free, and get a chance to put the basket up when he gets the opportunity. They look inside the Mark Tetzlaff. Good hands. That was a great catch he just made right there. Takes it up with a strong move to the goal, and now he's getting himself ready for the offensive rebound in the event the ball popped out. Jacksonville State in the one and one. Earl Warren gets the roll. John, there's no doubt about it. Everything is relative. I mean, to these kids right now, this national championship means every much, bit as much to the guys playing down in Lexington, Kentucky, when they play for the whole thing. The quality of play may not be on the same level of Division I, but they're very competitive, very intense, and very emotional. And, and, they, even, air ball. and they even throw up air balls. He did five out of six. 30-22, it's an eight-point lead. And you can see Bill Jones up. Mike Round waiting to inbound the ball, and we're underway here with 6.13 to play in the first half. 30-22 Jacksonville State. When he waves his white, white towel, the white towel means we get into our simplest defense, our 2-3. Catch left down low. Started to move and draws the foul. They're able to get the entry into Tetz left from right at the top of the circle, the high-low entry. Good play to get him the ball on the inside. Mike Round at 6'7", a good passer for a big guy. Bryant's first foul. And everything from here on out will be shot because that's team foul number six on the Gamecocks of Jacksonville State. They're stepping round out at number 55 as a passer on the top of the circle. That's what McDonald likes to do. He has three long-range baskets in the game. He's not bashful at all. The lead is six for Jacksonville State. McKellar brings it back to Williams. He'll set it up. Here's Allen. South Dakota State doing a little better job in defensive transition, getting back, forcing his club to play him five on five. If they can make it a five on five game, they got a shot. Allen penetrates, but a foul called on the rebound. Foul is called down low on Allen, I believe. The only chance the South Dakota State John has of getting a W. They have to play the game five against five and within 40 and 45 feet as we look at Gene Zolk. It's 30-24. Let's take a look. There's the move inside. Takes the ball up strong. That was Melvin Allen with the drive. And there's Herrick Harmon with the call. I missed it, John. Who did he get that foul on? The foul is on Allen, who went after his own rebound. For Warren back in the lineup for Jacksonville State. Allen gets a rest. Tetzlaff goes to the line. Tetzlaff with 32 points, 14 rebounds in the semifinal, averages over 18 points a game. He's a 58% field goal shooter, and he's a 69% free throw shooter. He gets everything from within about seven or eight feet around the basket. Williams jump shot, rims off. That's up. That's up. Oh. A 
along the baseline. The follow won't go. Warren came from out of bounds to pick that one up, so the ball will go over to South Dakota State. Officials are allowing him to play inside. They really are banging and crashing. There's Bill Jones waving his towel. He was a baseball pitcher, as you said, for one year in a pirate chain. Also was an outstanding free throw shooter. Holds the school record at Jacksonville State, 31 in a row. See how he picks up that dribble, and now he's in trouble. Catch lab. Off the heel of the rim, it comes away. Williams picks it up for the Gamecocks. Here comes Jacksonville State, up by six with 4.54 to play first half. Good team balance right now by South Dakota State. They're doing a good job getting back defensively, playing a soft man-to-man. -man. They're giving him the shot on the wings. Williams. Bryant tries to go inside, knocked away. And the Gamecocks will keep the basketball with 4.36 left. In the first half tonight, it's the NCAA Division II Men's Championship coming your way on ESPN. And right now, Jacksonville State with a six-point lead looking for title number one. NCAA Division II Women's Gymnastic Championship will be coming to Springfield. Take a look at Mark Tetzlaff. Great concentration. There he is right now. Look at that face. Look at his concentration right here. But he throws up a brick, and he says, oh, no, it's Brick City. 30-24 is our score. We're at the Civic Center in Springfield, Massachusetts. There is the rabbit, the mascot, South Dakota State, and Cocky, the mascot for the Gamecocks from Jacksonville State. That's Bob Lee running around. He got out of the studio, and he's running around as the mascot. He's freelancing, trying to make a few extra bucks on his side. After all that NCAA <laughs> tournament action in the studio, he had to get out, right? Oh, it drives you bananas after a while. You know, he gave me some AT, some air time. I couldn't believe it. Great coverage here on ESPN of the NCAA Division I and here the Division II Championship. Glad to have you with us in Springfield. I'm John Sanders with Dick Vitale. College hoops heading for the finish line for 1985. All the marbles in Division II on the line right here. They go over to Williams. Good shot. Nice pass by Spurgeon to Williams. Williams with the great legs and acrobatic play by the junior from out of just Jeffersonville State, J.C. Eight-point edge now for Jacksonville State. Williams has come off the bench to score six points here in the first half. Williams and Kelvin Bryant gives him a spark off the bench. McDonald off the glass won't go. Warren rebounds for Jacksonville State. Here come the Gamecocks. And McKellar traveled with the ball. Very dangerous time right now for South Dakota State. They got to make certain, John, that they do not allow a spurt right now by Jacksonville State to go into the locker room on a plus side in double figures. Psychologically, that can really be tough. So right now, each possession becomes vital to South Dakota State University. Jacksonville State with six turnovers. The Jackrabbits have turned it over four times. McDonald looks at that basket every time he gets it. But there is Derek Wardlaw, who is shooting much better tonight than he did in the semifinals. He said, hey, Isaiah Thomas, you played with me in high school, but I could shoot better than you, Isaiah. I don't believe Keller it, can't Derek. score. There's a foul, no good. And a foul called underneath. That's left is as we look at number 43. He's from Haiti, South Dakota. They only have 500 people in his community. We watch the pass right now by Spurgeon. He's going to look inside for Williams. There's Williams, acrobatic. Look at him hanging. Great balance. Fingertip control. He said, just like my buddy does for Alabama, Buck Johnson. I played with Buck. Taught him everything he knows. Spurgeon misses the foul shot. The junior from Cedartown, Georgia. Spurgeon's missed the consistency. If you check out his career, he's had a heck of a career. That will not go. Finally, Tetzlaff comes up with the rebound and picks up the foul. Calvin Bryant had a golden opportunity. But Calvin, out of frustration, is called for the foul. The foul was on Jacksonville. Calvin's second personal foul. It's a six-point lead right now for Jacksonville State. 3.23 left in the first half. You know, I was talking about Spurgeon before. He's more or less a garbage player also, a kind of guy that gets a lot of things off the glass. Average 10.7 and 82-83, 83-84, 12.8. We take a look at Mark Tetzlaff. He wasn't highly recruited at all, even on a Division II level, but stepped into the lineup the third game, and Gene Zog said from that moment on, we couldn't take him out of the lineup. He's been a star and just an absolute dynamite player for South Dakota State University. 
Holds all the career scoring and rebound records. Hits both foul shots. Eight points in the game. Hey, Ty, South Dakota. Some discussion this afternoon about how many people are there. You said 500. The paper here today said 600. I was told that they have 350 people at Hey, Ty. <laughs> Jacksonville State with the lead. It's down to four now. Man to man defense. Kelvin Bryant. Spurgeon rebounds, shoots, scores. That's exactly what I was talking about, being a garbage guy. A guy that really doesn't get a lot of credit, doesn't get a lot of recognition like the Melvin, Melvin Allens, and a lot of the star quality time. It doesn't get all the ink, but he does a lot of the intangibles on the floor. Comes up with a lot of loose balls. Six-point lead. Wardlaw from outside. Yes. Boy, he's got the hot hand tonight. Ten points for Derek Wardlaw. Derek's really in a rhythm shooting the ball. It's hard to believe he went 0 for 6 or 0 for 5 last night, John, in the semifinal game. McKellar. Low to Warren, his jump shot rims off. Spurgeon follows and scores. This Spurgeon keep making me look good like I did my homework. Spurgeon rips it off the glass. He says, please talk about me, Mr. Vital. I want them to hear about me nationally. Spurgeon has seven points in the game. The lead is six for Jacksonville State. They go low to Tetzlaff. He's fouled, no basket. The foul will go on Kelvin Bryant. Kelvin now has three personals. John, there really is a knack to getting free for the ball. Gene was telling us about, as we look at Gene Zalk, about his ability, Tetzlaff, to really recognize holes in the defense. So many players do not know how to flash to the ball and move without the ball. Guyton comes back in the lineup. Bryant, with his fouls, will go to the bench. So Tetzlaff will get a chance to shoot some foul shots. His free throw percentage is about 60, as we said, 69%, John. Well, he's now made three out of four, a total of nine points for Mark. Weighs 190 pounds at 6'7", so he's not bulky by any stretch of the imagination. They've had a great deal of tradition in basketball at South Dakota State University. They've had a number of outstanding teams and been very successful in their North Central Conference. Guyton back in the lineup gets the basket. Guyton a big, powerful force inside, averaging 15.1 a game, 7.6 rebounds a game. Good low post power player. He had 18 points, 11 rebounds in the semifinal victory for the Gamecocks over Kentucky Wesleyan. Now Mike Brown comes out to take it. Mike Brown only scores 3.3 points a game. He's an excellent passer, John. He knows his role on the floor as the pass, plays some good, tough defense, to come up with some good rebounds. He's a 6.6 .6 rebounder. Harvest Young with the basketball right now. Young came out of Henry Ford High School. High school produced Greg Kelser, former teammate of Magic Johnson. Tetzlaff missed the shot. Brown keeps it alive. Tetzlaff gets it back and scores. Tetzlaff, tough, hard nose, very aggressive. But you know who kept that ball alive? Doing all the intangibles, Mr. Round. Mike Round, number 55, kept it alive. The lead is down to five with a minute five left in the first half. We're in Springfield, Massachusetts. Kids are playing very hard, John. Both ends of the floor, they're really playing hard. If you're not going to play hard, thou shalt play hard every time you lace up the sneakers is the actual amendment to competition. And it is a national championship. Virgin is going to be a little short. A loose ball picked off by Wordlaw. Two of the Gamecocks fighting for the rebound, and Wordlaw picks it up. Now, earlier, he was taking everything to the basket, but he's changed a little bit and decided to go pull it back out going to a half-court offense. That was a good decision right there. They did not have the numbers. Back it out, trying to get the good shot. Using round again as a passer, number 55. 26 seconds left as it is banged home by Arvis Young. His first basket cuts it down to a three-point game now. 38-35, Jacksonville State. Young is normally a slashing kind of player, not a perimeter jump shot, but he had the open J, and he sticks it. That was a big basket also. Less than 10 to play first half. Spurgeon they takes a look at the clock, takes the shot, and hits. Nobody's checking him. He says, hey, Tetzlaff, I check you. I respect you. Give me some respect. You can't give me that open J like that. We have played the first 20 minutes of the 1985 NCAA Division II Men's Basketball Championship. The Gamecocks from Jacksonville State, Alabama, head to the locker room with a five-point lead over the Jackrabbits of South Dakota State. Welcome back.
back to Springfield, Massachusetts, where the Division II Men's Basketball Championship on the line tonight. Jacksonville State at halftime with a five-point edge. I'm John Sanders with Dick Vitale. I think the game pretty much has gone along the lines that we expected. Maybe the play of Melvin Allen, not point-wise what we thought he would get, but he has pretty much done his job outside. They have so much team balance, John, and their scoring totals. When you look at Jacksonville State, we take a look at Allen right here. Goes between the legs, little showtime, little hot dog in it. Now he's got great vision at the court. He spots an opening, and he's on my old blur team, Division Two. Look at him hang, take it up to the goal strong. The problem, Melvin Allen says, they don't show enough man-to-man. -man. Allen with six points in the first half. Spurgeon with a good first half. He had nine points. Picked up some, some baskets uh, late in the first half by follow shot. So he did a good job also. Uh, Kelvin Bryant and Pat Williams each picked up six points in the first half. They played well off the bench. Mark Tetzlaff obviously is the key for uh, South Dakota State to stay in this game. And he showed us why he is the leading scorer in the history of that school because he moves so well inside. Well, he moves well without the basketball, John. He does a tremendous job of getting free. We look at round right now at 6'7". A good passer for a big guy. He spots his teammate Tetzlaff flash into the ball, takes it up 43, gets into the seam of the defense, very active player, comes up, gets nothing but another deuce to his scoring Tetzlaff totals. had 11 points in the first half, but it is Jacksonville State out on top here in Springfield by five at halftime of the NCAA Men's Division II Basketball Championships. We'll be back. We're at halftime here in Springfield, Massachusetts, the birthplace of basketball. It's 40-35. Jacksonville State looking for its first ever Division II men's championship, leading the Jackrabbits by five points. Statistically, it looks like this. Field goal shooting an edge to Jacksonville. Also in the rebounding, a nine-point edge, and they have done very well offensively. Jacksonville with 14 offensive rebounds. Uh, Spurgeon got seven, uh, six of those offensive boards, and that was a key, especially late in the first half. That's why they have the lead right now, but it shouldn't surprise you, John. If you look at the statistics right now of Jacksonville State, they've averaged 45 rebounds a game to 33 rebounds to the opposition. That's a 12-point plus, and that's quite a bit. Right now, the field goal efficiency is not really effective like they are throughout the normal portion of the season. But you know that arm gets a little tighter and the ball gets a little heavier at tournament time. Petzlaff leading the scoring as we expected for South Dakota State with 11 in the first half, a couple of fouls. Wordlaw had 10. McDonald with three long range shots for his six points. Schultz and Young there. Also a good crowd here tonight, 6,187. Tell you more about that in a minute. Spurgeon with nine. Williams off the bench with eight to lead the scoring. Warren had seven. Allen, six. Bryant, six. Very evenly balanced, and that's exactly what we expected from the Gamecocks of Jacksonville State. Spurgeon played well, and uh, especially at the offensive board. He got some follow shots. He did the things that he had to do. Here, Warren will take the shot. Keep your eye on number 44. He's a crasher, John. As we talked about, he's a garbage guy. He's going to come up with the loose ball, and that's how he's really scored his nine points other than one open jump shot that he did convert from the wing. Tonight's attendance, 6,187. A new record here, 16,807 for the tournament. The championship of men's division two, Jacksonville State has the lead. Welcome back to Springfield, Massachusetts. This is John Sanders along with Dick Vitale. Jacksonville State up by five at halftime. And it'll be the Jackrabbits of South Dakota State University to key the inbounds play to start the second half of action. Let's see if the Jackrabbits can hang in here against the fighting Gamecocks in the second half. Brown goes low. Schultz back in the lineup, rolls it in. Schultz had foul trouble in the first half. They really know how to execute the inside game, rotating Schultz and Tetzlaff. Constantly getting good motion inside. Oh. Allen stripped of the basketball by Tetzlaff. Allen penetrated that time, gave it up. A chance now for South Dakota State to move within one. Jacksonville State now playing, looks like, a 2-3 zone. They do a little gimmick stuff outside with their guards. Wordlaw has had the hot hand. He still does. Wordlaw's got good rhythm to his shot tonight, John. He's catching it. He's got good balance, good rotation an excellent concentration on his release. And it's 40-39. Jacksonville State's lead is down to one. They were up by as many as eight in the first half. That's perfect execution. Two possessions and they come up with four points. Guyton chases down the rebound. John, if you chart a team offensively and try to come up with their offensive efficient, efficiency rating, 
four points in two possessions is what we call a perfect score. Warren from outside. Earl Warren with nine points in the game. He's six feet tall, but he's a good inside-outside player. Good offensive rebounder for a guy six foot tall and has some pretty good range as a shooter. A streaky shooter. Wordlock pulls it out on the two-on-two. -two. You saw the good heady play by Mike Round. He is allowed to run that baseline, and he took advantage of it to get the inbound play. McDonald from long range. <laughs> McDonald. They can consistently get the perimeter shot the fall. It would open up passing lanes inside the Tetzlaff. Yes. Allen forces it up. Rebound, Tetzlaff. A chance now for South Dakota State to take the lead. They've done a good job getting some really good shots offensively. Word law starts a drive. Now brings it back outside to round. Jump past to Word law from the side. Can't hit. And Tetzlaff fouled him going for the rebound. He was all over. He said, no, I didn't really grab him. I was going for the ball. So that's three personal fouls on Mark Tetzlaff. It's really a great advantage when you have a guy about 6'7", like Round, who can see over the top of the defenses, especially over the little guards, Allen and also Warren. He can see opening, openings in the defense, and he's an excellent passer from up on top. Warren with the ball against McDonald. They go low. Guyton uses the board, can't score. Gets it back and still can't score. There underneath is Spurgeon. Mr. Spurgeon, he's playing like a star of stars tonight. A really attacking the glass. He doesn't want to go back to Jacksonville State with a silver trophy. He says, fellas, we got 30 in a row. I need one more. I want the gold trophy. McDonald will set up the offense for South Dakota State to round. It's almost like a 6-7 point guard. Donald had an idea, did not shoot. They really can play right off him, John, because he's not even going to think shot. Schultz, a good spinning shot against uh, McKellar. Uh, Schultz with two baskets in the second half, a one-point edge to Jacksonville State. Schultz doing a good job getting free inside. That will be a foul on Guyton. Robert Guyton. South Dakota State came out, formed a nice triangle on the defensive boards. Gene Zug says, I like it. He's not in his head. But his assistant, Mr. Workman, they say, I like it. Bill Jones says, I don't like it. Well, he has seen a five-point halftime lead dwindle. And with the basketball, the Jackrabbits from Brookens, South Dakota, have a chance to take the lead. Kenslap has 10 rebounds now. And the 7,000 people in Brookens are going bananas. Hey, look at that range. I mean, that's Larry Bird country where he's trying to shoot him from. Wordlaw picks up the offensive foul. McDonald, number 31, I mean, he just lets it fly. I would have loved to watch him play in high school, John. He probably had no conscience when he touched the ball. He probably let it fly from all over to score his 35.5. But he must have been a fun kid to watch. His arm had to get awfully tired. Ooh, they rubbed it down every day in the locker room. The Gamecocks with a one-point lead and the basketball here. 16-39 left in the game. The championship game of men's division two for the NCAA. Playing really soft man-to-man -man to take away driving lanes from Melvin, Melvin Allen. Spurgeon from long range rolls off. Battle underneath. Wordlaw wins it. Comes up with the ball. And Wordlaw, another offensive foul. Well, that's an excellent call by Eric Harmon of the Big Ten. Excellent call. Defensive player was stationary, beat him to the spot, and definitely drew the charge. Wordlaw has four personal fouls. Three of them are offensive fouls. And that's a big foul because he's been having a great night. We look at him trying to push the ball up the court. Defensive man is planted. Mr. Spurgeon again making the big play. Robert Spurgeon from out of Cedartown, Georgia, has been really doing a great job here tonight. Here's McKellar now. Keith McKellar has been very quiet. Guyton with a turnaround jumper, bending, bending off. Spurgeon there for the rebound. John, has Keith McKellar scored yet? I know he averages 11 points a game and nine rebounds a game. He has a deuce. Two points. You're right. 15-59 left in the basketball game. The lead is one. Notice how they play soft on number four. Watch when number four touches the ball. They will not come out and check him tough. They'll play off him. Deflected out of bounds by Arvis Young, who has taken over for Derek Wordlaw. Wordlaw on the bench with uh, four personal fouls. That really hurts South Dakota State. You can see the front court scoring in the first half. Jacksonville State with the big edge, 27 to 19. It's 44-43 here. Gamecocks have the lead and the basketball. Look how they play off number four when he catches the ball. They know he likes to drive with it. Spurgeon outside. Schultz has him. 
There's the drive and the basket for Allen. As we talked about, John, he's a driving, slashing kind of player. He spots a little opening in the defense, and he has that great quick ability to take it immediately to the basket. Oh. Schultz gets his rebound back. Tetzlaff battles. He oh. has it. He scores. Tremendous hands by Tetzlaff to come up with the loose ball. Great fingertip control, and they love it in Jack Rabbit country as they really explode the South Dakota State fans who are here. A couple of quick baskets put South Dakota State right back in it. They're down by a point now. Spurgeon against Schultz. Here's Allen. Now they showed they can come from behind. They showed a lot of poise last night against Mount St. Mary's. Turnover by Guyton. McDonald now comes back for South Dakota State. Goes to Schultz. They'll set up the half-court offense, and Round will key the ball. Against Jimmy Phelan's club last night, Mount St. Mary's, they went four and a half minutes without a score. McDonald does not get the roll. Round gets the rebound and the basket. His first basket of the game, and it puts South Dakota State ahead by a point. Well, he's been doing an outstanding job passing the basketball, playing some tough inside defense, and now he goes to the glass, and oh, do they love it. They must be going bananas in Brooklyn, South Dakota. Here's Warren to Spurgeon. They go low. McKellar's turnaround. No good. Rebounded inside by Arvis Young. So the Jackrabbits have gotten hot in the second half. Still 13-58 to play. What well, they're doing really a better job of, they're neutralizing the front court of Jacksonville State on the boards and not giving them that second and third shot like they did early in the first half. Young has a notion. Goes inside to Schultz. McDonald, he won't hesitate. Alley-oop time, it's good. Arvis Young gets his second basket, a three-point lead for South Dakota State. Tremendous pass inside as Young snuck right behind the defense, threw the lob up over the top of it. Foul is on Arvis Young. This is where Melvin, Melvin Allen really shows his best, John. He did it also last night against Kentucky Wesleyan when the game really got tough, as Bill Jones told us today in our meeting. He said, Melvin wants the basketball. He has a way of making the big play to give us a spark. But it is Gene Zolk's team on top by three right now at 49-46. He seems calm. Don't let that fool you. He's really a great guy today at the team. Hey, both coaches were so cooperative because let's face reality, John, we didn't know a heck of a lot about these teams, and we had to really force feed it, and I'm going to tell you something. They have really cooperated with us. Allen at the foul line tonight is three for three. Trying to move his team, the Gamecocks, back within one. He's the catalyst of this club. He's a 78% shooter. Watch him go into a full court press using Guyton on a baseline. They'll do it when we come back. 13-27 left to play. South Dakota State University has come back to take a one-point lead over Jacksonville State University. Robert Spurgeon right now is going to demonstrate why he's been such a successful player. Ball goes down inside. There's the little banker. Now we watch the aggressive play, watch it pop into the hands. Strong move to the goal. Now here it goes, number 44. He's got great hands, very active, constantly going to the glass. Goes after every rebound like it's his last meal. And Jacksonville State down by a point at 49-48 here. South Dakota shooting 7 of 11 in the second half. Jacksonville State 3 of 11. That's part of the difference as Jacksonville State has lost its halftime lead. Now, let's go back to the other side, watch a little alley-oop action. McDonald throws the lob over the top to Arvis Young. He sneaks behind the defense, and the Motor City Flash, he came over to me, he says, Coach, I used to watch you coach with the Detroit Pistons. He said, I'm from the Motor City. I said, yeah, I know, Henry Ford High School, where, Henry, where Greg Kelser played. He said, how did you know that? I said, I did my research, Arvis. The Jackrabbits are right back in this one. You can see the percentages in the second half. It's been all South Dakota State. They've really had such an effective game plan coming out here for the second half, doing a better job for the triangle on the boards. Here comes the hard, tough, full-court pressure. Notice how they posted right to the middle of the floor, John. That's the way you have to beat the diamond zone press. And they've outscored Jacksonville 14 to 8 here in the second half. McDonald playing catch with Young right now. They were ready for that one. They tried to sneak Young again, but they telegraphed it. 
So now, Jacksonville State with a chance to regain the lead. Allen takes the shot. It rattles in. Well, but Allen is my kind of player, John. You can just see it in his eyes. He's just a tough kid, a competitor. I love people that want the ball when the pressure's on the line. McDonald breaks the press. Ketzlaff has it. Mark will back it out all the way to round. 12.40 to play in the game. Jacksonville State by one. Notice the better poise and the patience now in attacking the press than earlier in the game where they just were going out of kilter. Round, a rare long shot from him. He has shot two times in the game, hit them both, both big baskets. Hey, Round looks over and he says, hey, Dick Vitale, you're talking about I'm not a scorer, but look at me. I could shoot the long-range jumper and I got a big rebound before for a deuce. Round was an outstanding scorer in high school, but has not put it up that much in college. Loose ball. Possession belongs to Jacksonville State. So the Gamecocks will keep it with 12-11 to play, down by a point. John, you got to remember this now. When you've got a 30-game win streak on the line and you're down psychologically, how does, it, how does this affect your club? Because you're really not playing from behind too often during the course of the year. Lost their opening game and have rattled off 30 victories in a row. How about Virginia Union? Goes 31-0, gets to the NCAAs, and loses their first game. They're out. They're they done. Got, they got beat by Big House Gaines, one of the great coaches in college basketball at Winston-Salem. The school that produced a great Division II player, Earl the Pearl Monroe. They played a little slowdown. Charlie Oakley was player of the year from out of Virginia Union. They tell me he's a mountain and he's going to be an NBA player. A one-point lead for the Jackrabbits. Two-three zone. Got to step right into the gaps and seams. Oh, good. That's good Guyton play. down low. Guyton's a big space eater. Takes a lot of room. He averages 15.1 a game, 7.6 rebounds a game. He's an excellent athlete. Two on one. Arvish Young stripped of the ball as he went to the hoop and he lost it. That's exactly the kind of pace and tempo right now Jacksonville State wants. If you notice how successful. This guy's club was South Dakota State, Gene Zulk's club, is when they got into the five-on-five -five game. There's the good head fake, pump fake, takes it up, lay it off the glass, Mr. Robert Guyton. 52-51, Jacksonville State back on top. This from out of Birmingham, Alabama. That city produces some excellent high school players. Spurgeon, jump shot. Yes. I like Spurgeon. I like a lot of things he does on the floor. Baseball pass is intercepted. They're getting wild again, John. They're again getting wild. And all it will take is a two, three minute spurt by Jacksonville State to run up a number of points because they're a very explosive team. Robert Guyton, with the good effort, could not run it down. So the Jackrabbits will put it in play again. They're down by three points here with 11 10 to play. Tom McDonald's got to take a little bit more charge in the basketball as the point guard and settle this club down. They're trying to play a little bit too much at the pace. He's going to take charge from outside. Another long-range bomb from McDonald. He has 10 points. I would not want to play the game of horse against Mr. McDonald. He puts you out into rage that you'd never be able to catch him. 54-53, Jacksonville State from Alabama, leading the Jack Rabbits from Brooklyn, South Dakota. And again, it's Spurgeon. Boy, he's been there when they've needed it. 15 points for him. He's been a positive force here tonight both on the glass and shooting the wing jumper. There's the pack against the pressure. I believe in trying to attack and score or two, John, in most cases, but tonight I would want to back the ball out and let this club have to guard me on a defensive end. 56-53, they go low to Schultz. Up and in. Notice how successful they are. If they were to chart their scoring opportunities and the productivity they get against five on five, I would think that they would be on a positive plus side. Down one on the scoreboard, 56-55. Jacksonville State has the lead and the basketball. We are inside 10 minutes remaining in this NCAA Division II championship game. Spurgeon again. This time he misses. Going high is Mike Round with a big rebound and a chance again for the Jackrabbits to take the lead. Mike Round certainly not what you would call a spectacular player with great jumping ability. But he does all the right things. That was an excellent pass right there by Round. Gets it to Tess, Tetzlaff. His turnaround is good. Boy, he is so strong inside there. And a foul is called away from the basketball on Spurgeon. Tetzlaff will get the basket. He has 15 points. Johnny also knows how to drop step, reverse pivot, spin away from the defense. 
He just made an excellent scoring move when he caught that basketball in the lane area. He's so smooth inside, Nick, it almost fools you at times when he spins and puts the ball in the air. Such a great touch from about five feet from the basket. We have a timeout on the court. 9.29 to play in this NCAA Division II championship game. South Dakota State has come back to take a one-point lead over Jacksonville State. This is Division II basketball, and you see some of the name coaches who've gone on to bigger things from Division II. Well, these are examples of guys who won the national championship on a Division II level. Sonny Allen at Old Dominion University at 75, now coaching at Nevada, Reno. 78, we had John Cheney win it at Cheney State in Philadelphia, now doing a fantastic job at Temple. And then we had Charlie Moyer winning in 72 with Roanoke, beating Eastern Michigan and the Iceman, George Gervin, and now he's doing it at Virginia Tech. And so it was lot Temple that eliminated Virginia Virginia Tech from the NCAA Division I tournament this year. A lot of those guys, John, who start out in Division II, eventually move up the ladder. Latticer with the basketball. He's in the lineup. They go low, throw it away. Spurgeon picks it off. That's really the first mistake that Mike Round has made. Man-to-man -man defense right now. Melvin Allen, the star player with the basketball. South Dakota State has a one-point lead. Jacksonville State has the ball. Inside, Spurgeon missed the shot. They battle to the court. Up and in by Calvin Bryant. Calvin Bryant comes up with the score. The freshman from out of Columbia High School in Atlanta, Georgia. But you know who kept that ball active? Mr. Spurgeon. He has scrapped hard tonight. 8.40 to play in the game. Jacksonville State by one. Hang on. This is the championship of the Division II. They're playing for all the gold, John. They don't want to go home with a silver trophy. They want the big gold one. Low to Schultz. Missed the shot. Tetzlaff keeps it alive. He goes up again. He misses. Gets it again. And he's oh, fouled. Is he a worker? Is he a worker? He's constantly going after the ball on the boards, John. Constantly hungry for that second and third shot. The foul will go on Guyton. Let's take a look. Look at him, how active he's inside. He's fighting and scrapping and clawing. He wants to bring home the goal. He says, I want to take it home to Brooklyn, South Dakota. And look at him battling and gets knocked to the deck. So that's four fouls on Guyton. He's going to come out. Back will come McKellar. So Guyton sits down and Keith McKellar is back in the lineup. We take a look right now at Tetzloff going to the free throw line. Certainly a guy making a lot of all-star teams. But you think of some of the great players that have played from Division II. Marvin Webster, Morgan State, Don Busey from Evansville, all in the NBA. Chuck Robinson from out of Tennessee State, Earl de Pearl Monroe. And what about a guy by the name of Jerry Sloan and Walt Clyde Frazier at Southern Illinois, where he played under Jack Hartman, now coaching at Kansas State. And that was the NIT championship team of Mr. Hartman, of course. But they were Division II before they changed to become a Division exactly I. Exactly right. Salukis. 59-58, South Dakota State University back on top. Latticer almost came up with a steal. Changed their defensive look right now. They went to a 1-2-2 two, two set. Playing Schultz at the point of it, the big guy. Jesus. Pat Williams from deep in the corner knocks it home. Williams gives him range as a shooter coming off the bench against the zone. He's a zone buster. 60-59, it's Jacksonville State back on top. We're in the odd number situation, and we're in the seesaw here for the championship in Division II. We got a good game, John. It's really exciting watching the intensity and the emotion on the floor. Round goes low. Inside is Schultz. Bends off. The foul is called away. Kelvin Bryant was actually behind the play. He said, who, me? I didn't do anything. <laughs> Give me a break. Kelvin was more of a spectator than anything else, but he's going to get the foul. Let's keep your eye on number 30, see what he does in there. Ball goes down inside. Look at Tetz left with that good, oh, that's Schultz with a good head fake, very similar kind of players inside. Somebody pushed Tetz left out of the way. Somebody threw him out of the way. Blank got caught, number 30, but he said, no, it wasn't me. Well, Jacksonville State's only loss of the year was a one-point game. They are one and one in one-point game. Lost opening game to Belmont Abbey, as I said earlier. That's where Al McGuire started his coaching career. South Dakota State is 3-0 and in one-point games. And Tom McDonald with 12 points. He has 12 in the semifinals, 12 in the championship game tonight, and he earns every one of them. I mean, he shoots from, those are three-point shots, all of them. They are three-point range. He tickles the twine. Little conversation at the other end between Eric Harmon, Schultz, and Spurgeon. Because it's getting a little physical, a little rough inside. Well, 
Eric just simply said to both teams and to both guys, he said, hey, Blake, fellas, let's play some hoops. Let's not get himself, ourselves involved in any kind of unnecessary contact. South Dakota State semifinal game with Mount St. Mary's was extremely physical. You know what the president of South Dakota State University's name is? Mr. Hoops, I believe. Mr. Hoops. Pat Williams with 12 points. He comes off the bench, gives him a lift, gets a couple of quick baskets, and back on top goes Jacksonville State. Williams is that cliche that's used, instant offense as soon as he steps off the bench. Brown had an idea. He's back to McDonald. You have to cover him starting at the timeline. Cover him when he comes out of the locker room. Right. He's coming shooting from the time he laces the shoes up. No, he's not going to think about it from out there, is he? I no, Tom, not from out there. Latticer penetrates. Rebound Schultz. He goes back up, gets the foul. It's amazing how Schultz and Tetzlaff come up with so many loose balls and so many rebounds, and they're not great leapers or jumpers. They just prove if you work hard. There's the baseline drive by Latticer. Now watch, look at Schultz inside. Take it up with power. McKellar gets his first personal foul. Schultz will go to the line, his first chance tonight. He's a good foul shooter, over 76%. In fact, he's over 77% in the regular season. He gets the roll. He gets the roll because he has that good backspin, that rotation that will many times will give you that basket that normally would not fall in. Mark is a junior. An even dozen for him tonight. He had a dozen in the semifinal game. 63-62. The lead goes back to South Dakota State. It's going to really come down to probably good free throw shooting at the end, John, and execution of the delay game for the team to walk out with the goal. We've had 11 lead changes in the second half. We still have six minutes exactly remaining in this one. It's a good one. Temple has definitely swung over to South Dakota State. They've shut down the transition game of Jacksonville State. I can't remember too many fast break layups in this half. Williams again. They keep it alive, and a foul is called from behind. I believe it will be Tetzlaff. And Mark has picked up his fourth personal foul with 5.45 to play in the game. That's a big decision right now. This is where coaches have to earn their money. Gene Zelk's not even thinking about taking them out. Star player with four fouls, five minutes on the clock. Do you get him out for a minute or two and then bring him back? Well, obviously, Coach Zulk has decided he can't afford to do that. Allen swings it back to Williams. I would leave him on the floor, too. I agree with him, John. There's no tomorrow. This is it, baby. This is what we practice for starting in October. And if I lose, I want to get beat with my best people on the floor. Good point. Kelvin Bryant goes low. Spurgeon loses the ball. They took it to Spurgeon, who tried to take it to Tetzlaff. They'd love to get him out of the ball game. We have had 11 lead Look at Bill changes. Jones. Bill Jones says, oh, my goodness. I can't believe it. He says, there's got to be an easier way to make a living. I was teasing him today. I said, you win the national championship, you're going to get your name in a derby for the Joe B. Hall job at Kentucky. There's Tetzlaff. Tetzlaff always around the basketball. The MVP of South Dakota State University. Hey, Ty, South Dakota's got to love him. All 500 people. Reflected out of bounds by Brown. The Tetzlaff now has 19 points in the game. It's a three-point edge for South Dakota State. 65-62, 5.07 left. Decision time. When do you back the ball out? When do you make it frustration city on a club that's got 30 in a row? Remember, we're looking at a team with the ball that's behind, and they right now have the longest win streak in America of any division. Talk about your George Towns. Any team you want to talk about, 30 in a row with the team in white, and they're losing. Allen Lowe draws the foul. It'll be on Latticer. So Tetzlaff dodges a bullet. I thought the foul might be on him, but it goes on Bob Latticer, number five. They enter the ball, flash it down inside. Latticer's going to bump right here. Melvin Allen posting inside. The little guy, number four, always, as we said earlier, wants the ball at clutch time. Hey, John, as a team, they're shooting 68% from the free throw line. This guy, Allen, right now, you're looking at a guy that's shooting 78% from the free throw line. And he's 100% tonight, four out of four, five out of five. He's from out of Tony, Alabama. He went to the University of Alabama in Huntsville, played there just shortly in the first year, and then transferred here to Jacksonville State University. Now a senior, he's had a great career. Nails both of them, six in a row at the foul line, 14 in the game. It is a one-point game with 4.50 to play. South Dakota State University, the Jackrabbits up by one over Jacksonville State, the Gamecocks.
we have NCAA Division I hockey coming your way. It'll be Saturday, March 30th, 7 o'clock in the east, 4 o'clock out on the west coast. It is subject to blackout in some areas, but it's ESPN's March of Champions continuing right here on your source for sports, ESPN, the Total Sports Network. Division II men's basketball championship here. Credit the play of Mark Tetzlaff. He has helped bring South Dakota State back in this ballgame. Watch Tetzlaff operate. There's the pass by McDonald. Ball comes down inside. Now watch Tetzlaff. He goes up real strong, lays it down. John, he's a Great surf touch, and huh? turf player. He's no hamburger. That is surf and turf. And you're taking me out for a nice surf and turf dinner after this oh, game. All right. Mark Tetzlaff with 19 points and 13 rebounds. That goes with the 32 points and 14 rebounds he had in the semifinals. There's a guy that comes to play every single night. Well, John, I think most athletes have to realize whenever you lace those shoes up, you got to give 100% or don't come out of floor. Right now, we get into some serious decisions by the coaches. When do I come out in full court pressure? If I'm Jacksonville State, who do I foul? When do I back the ball out? We got 4.45 on the clock. They're going to zone. Should I back it out? That's a decision that has to be made. Like oh, Coach White Zult. Powell is out right now for Coach Bill Jones. He's got red, white, and blue over there, and those are his basic defenses that he'll use. He has the white out. 2-3 zone right now. I would bring it out a little bit. I would spread the court and not go on a complete delay, but I'd really make them play and only take the real high percentage shot. Wordlaw is back in the lineup. He's playing with four fouls. So is Tetzlaff. And you've got the zone buster in front, Tom McDonald, if they decide to have him shoot. But I'm kind of like you. Might as well wait a while. You have 414 left in the game now. Well, I think you're the heavy underdog when you're playing a club that's won 30 in a row with the kind of athletes that Jacksonville State has on the floor. Put the pressure on them. They're, you got the lead right now. You got the ball. They're sitting in a zone. Back it out. Play for the high percentage shot. He picks up his dribble too soon, John. He's susceptible to a trap. He doesn't keep his dribble long enough. Latticer had a notion. Brings it back to McDonald. As long Less as than four minutes to play. As long as they don't want to put pressure, I'd back that ball out and play for the open shot and take a lot of time. Notice how he picks up his dribble? Here's Latticer again. He'll shoot from long range, bending in. He got the roll. Latticer, a big, big basket. You talk about oh. That is money time right there. That's a prime time shot. A PTP or prime time performer, Mr. Latticer. 3.30 to play in the game. Allen on the drive, missed the shot. Tipped away, out of bounds. It belongs to South Dakota State. Bill Jones in pain and agony. And Let's go, he says. 30 in a row. we got to get one more. Gene Zulk says, I can't believe it. We're on top. 67-64. <laughs> They're on top by three. And you'll definitely see them take some time. I was surprised that Latticer shot the ball. I was, too, because it really wasn't what you would call a good shot. Here's Tetzlaff down low. He drew the foul. He has that way of drawing the foul and drawing the contact, John. That is a good shot because that's in the realm of his normal game. Watch him catch the ball at the 15-foot area. Latticer with the basketball. Picked up his dribble. There's the reverse. They get the ball right to Tetzlaff. 12 feet, takes it up, draws the contact. London Bradley right on a call. I think we're seeing an excellent job with the whistle here. I'll tell you, back in the lineup is Robert Guyton. Sitting down is Kelvin Bryant. The foul was on Keith McKellar. Tetzlaff will go to the line now, where he has hit five out of seven. Try those double stats, 19 and 13. It bends in. 20 it's, points for Mark. I know a lot of people down in Brooklyn, South Dakota are jumping in joy. They have 7,000 students out there. We have 311 left here. The lead goes to five. Ooh, Biggest ooh, lead of the ball game for South Dakota State. 69-64. Now the pressure's really on Jacksonville State. They fall back in their zone. That's the team that has the poise that's the show right here. Now they rotate into a man-to-man. -man. Surprised me a little bit. Pat Williams on a drive goes baseline. Did not get the ball. Latticer picks up the foul. Williams with a good, strong baseline drive. He's got to make these two fouls, and I look for them to go into their strong, trapping defense. 2.53 to play. Plenty of time. It's like eternity for the coach sitting there. I know on a smaller scale, John, I was fortunate enough to win several state championships, and they were all nail biters. And I'll tell you, he's sitting at sideline, it's like an eternity. Williams' first chance at the foul line, he comes up empty. 
Pat's a junior from Birmingham. He makes this. I look for the full court for Diamond Press. He comes up empty, 0 for 2, and then there's a foul. He went over the top to get it. The foul goes on McKellar. McKellar's really had a very frustrating night. Keith has been such a consistent player all year long. 11-point scorer, 9.9 rebounder, and he's really been not a factor at all on the floor. He has two points in the game. And he has a total of three rebounds in the game, so, so he's been say, quiet. You'd have to say it's been an m and or a mismatch inside with Tetzlaff, and even though they're not playing head-to-head -head in all defense to McKellar, but Tetzlaff is owning the lane area. Mark is 7 of 9 at the foul line. 21 points in the game. Comes up short. 2.48 to play. Jacksonville State down by five. The Gamecocks have the basketball. Their 30-game win streak and the championship being threatened. Warren from outside. Rebound underneath to Schultz. Schultz and Tetzlaff were both right in the right spot. Well, they're forming an excellent triangle along with Latticer inside, making it very difficult for Jacksonville State to get any kind of lanes to the basket. They take the timeout with 2.26 left in this NCAA Men's Division II Championship game. South Dakota State has come back to grab a five-point lead, 69-64 over Jacksonville State. Night college baseball continues live here on ESPN Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. A couple of powerhouses from the Big Eight will go at it live Sunday, March 31st, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, 5 o'clock out on the West Coast. Be here for college baseball 1985. South Dakota State shooting 63% in the second half. Jacksonville State shooting 45%. All the agony that the coaches go through. Oh, he looks and he says, why couldn't I listen to my parents and be a doctor? to follow the lead of his father, who was a well-known lawman in the state of Alabama. McDonald, they'll put some pressure on him. Good decision right here by Bill Jones, going for the good pressure man-to-man -man defense. They're really digging in man-to-man wise. They're gonna have to start thinking, John, of laying some fouls on people. There is the foul. Earl Warren's second personal foul. And they'll put McDonald at the line. Now, I don't think he's the guy you want to foul, the way he can shoot. Of course, maybe he's not far enough away. out ought to back off to at least the top of the circle. He's got really a nice release and a nice follow-through. He's shooting 91% on the free throw line. Would you believe it? Am I reading the right statistic, John? 91%? That's illegal. That's right, though. There's Latticer. Round lead. You can see that Coach Zolk now putting in Latticer when he looks for some defense. He'll go back to round for the ball control. He has that great spin, that rotation that gives you what we call a dead ball up on the rim. McDonald with 13 points in the game, also eight assists. With the conversion right here, he converts this. They most likely will jump back into the zone defense, take a lot of time off the clock. They've got a chance, seven point lead. But quickly, it is Melvin Allen to answer. They call timeout. Oh, they now have 207 left. There's a timeout right now by. Melvin Allen, I don't like that timeout. 71-66, the lead is five for South Dakota State. Seventy-one sixty-six. The timeout was taken by Jacksonville State. Dick, you said you didn't like it. Why? Well, that's a good timeout in terms of strategy by the coach, Bill Jones. What I mean by that, John, to clarify it, I don't like the rule. I was telling Ed Stites here tonight, who's the athletic director at Springfield College and also the head of the rules committee, I said, Ed, it makes the game an eternity. I like the NBA rule where you cannot call a timeout, John, unless you have possession of the basketball. Back to key the inbounds play is Mike Round. He runs, gets it to Schultz. Schultz is picked up back to Round. That's what you want to do, reverse the basketball. Fouled by Spurgeon. Notice how they had a, they had a trail guy against the pressure. They're well organized against the press. The good timeout. They know the pressure's coming, and they set up against it. By having a trail man, I mean this, John. Once the trap comes, Gene Zulk set it up as we look at him right now, and he's saying, please, just let that clock move. 202, and I got a gold trophy, and they'll treat me like a hero back in Brooklyn, South Dakota. Bill Jones says, please don't move clock. Don't go. Mike Round is short. Warren rebounds for Jacksonville State, a chance to cut it to three. Here come the Gamecocks. Here's Allen, penetrates, 
Draws the foul. Tetzlaff has just fouled out of the game. He not only fouls out of the game, stops the clock, puts a guy on a free throw line that's a good scorer and Melvin Allen. A lot of bad things happen right there on that one play, John. That is five on Mark Tetzlaff. What a great game for him. The senior from Haiti, South Dakota, with 21 points, 13 rebounds. Johnny hit five at the 550 mark. He incurred his fourth foul. Gene Zulk made a gutty coaching move by keeping him on the floor, which I second and really believe it was a good move to keep him on the floor. He went four minutes, gave him some plus basketball. He just didn't stand around as the Kodak man and become a stationary guy, taking pictures because he had number four. But now he picks up number five, and they have to hang on for a minute and 53. So Allen will go to the line. Six for six. 78% shooter on the line. 17 points for Melvin Allen. He had 24 in the semifinals. Cuts that lead to four. Chance to get within three. Well, not only is the conversion important to get you a little closer, it allows them to key their defense to get into their full court pressure. Here, they're in a full court press right now, face guarding, not going to allow the ball in bounds. There's the baseball pass. Oh, Guyton intercepts. Right. But he goes out of bounds as he bangs into the scorer's table on the far side of the court. Could not maintain his balance, slipped out of bounds. John, let me say this and clarify the bad play because right there, you've got to post people up. You've got to flash to the ball. That pass extremely dangerous with them having what we call a center fielder, a guy back to go back for that long pass. Timeout is called by Jacksonville. They now have two left. Each team has two timeouts remaining. Remember, he's got to get the timeout before the official hits the count of four. 151 left. It is South Dakota State by three here in Springfield. Men's Division II championship game for 1985 going right down to the finish line. Coach Gene Zulk up by three. A minute 51 to play. He has the basketball. And they turn it over. John really struggling to get the ball in bounds, both from the baseline and the sideline. Not getting any kind of screening action to free someone to come to the basketball. Gene Zolk does not agree with that call, obviously, but the basketball goes to Jacksonville State. The Gamecocks now with a minute and 45 seconds left. Look for Melvin Allen to want to make something happen with the ball. Number four. He has it to Williams. That will be a foul on McDonald. Tom McDonald picks up the personal foul. Not an intelligent foul. It stops that clock again. With two minutes on a the clock, they were on a plus five side. It's down to three, going to the line, and the clock hasn't even moved, John. It's moved 21 set, 23 seconds since Bill Jones says it's got to be an easier way to make a living, and it's got to be. But you know what, John? When you win in basketball, it's like utopia to a coach. Earl Warren has nine points. He's five out of six at the line. Warren and Allen have done a great job on a free throw line, keeping them right within striking distance. They've only missed one between them. A chance to cut it to one. Now here comes the full court pressure. If he converts it, he gets the roll. And here comes the pressure right now. Now they can change their press. They go to Guyton on a the baseline. There's that baseball pass. Schultz gets it, but from behind, Williams with a steal. Jacksonville State with a chance to take the lead, a minute and a half to play. And you have to credit it to their pressure defenses and the changing of their pressure to different looks by Bill Jones. Still South Dakota State by one. We're on the odd number on the scoreboard, 71-70. And remember, their star is sitting on the sideline with five fouls. Mark Tetzlaff. Allen goes low to Williams, misses the shot, they get it back. Guyton chases it down. Well, they're hungry after the ball, John. I'll tell you something, these kids, there's no quitting them. You can see why they've won 30 in a row. A minute to play. You can watch the scoreboard count down. And remember, the team in white has a 30-game losing streak, and they are losing. Here's and Spurgeon. Low to Allen. Yes. Who wants the ball, John? We've been talking about it. Mr. Clutch. He wants the ball at clutch time, number four, Melvin Allen. 
They get the timeout with 40 seconds left in the game. Jacksonville State has battled back from a five-point deficit. As Dick mentioned, a minute and 20 seconds ago, they were down by five. They're now up by one. Pressure defense. The key for South Dakota State, the Jackrabbits couldn't even get the ball in bounds a couple times. They've really had trouble entering the basketball, and that's been their major problem. They can't get the ball on the floor smoothly, and the quickness and the aggressiveness really reflecting the style of their coach, Bill Jones, who certainly has demonstrated he's a fighter and scrapper, and his players are playing the same way. 12 lead changes in this game. Let's go back and take another look at the long pass to Schultz, and you'll see the speed of Williams come into play here. Now they pop the ball right out of Schultz's hand. Hands from behind as Williams on the floor playing their three guards to get quick miss with Williams, Warren, and also Allen. Allen now with 20 points in the game to lead the scoring as we expected for Jacksonville State. Really a lot of panic against the pressure, John. Three possessions now. They've come up empty, not, a, not even getting a shot, not even getting a chance to run down some time on the clock. So with 40 seconds left, the pressure goes to the Jackrabbits. Well, really, what they'd like to have happen right now is be able to get the ball into the point guard's hands, get it into McDonald's hands, because even if they foul him, he's a 91% shooter. I'm sure Bill Jones has told his guys, we don't want to foul number 31. He's automatic on the line. Latticer has it. There's the to ball McDonald's. The they trap him. Back to Latticer. Wordlaw has it. Time remaining, 30 seconds. Going to look for the first good shot, down one. They're certainly not going to take it right down to the buzzer. It's a one-point game. Change defense is there in a man-to-man, -man, really playing tight on McDonald. Williams doesn't want him to get the ball, but they scream for him, and they get him the ball. McDonald. And it rotates. Ten seconds left in the game. He doesn't have any... They have no awareness to the clock, John. They have no awareness to the clock. They have no awareness to the clock. Jacksonville. There's a foul. Two seconds left. All kinds of high fives. They're celebrating. They're dancing in Jacksonville, Alabama. Look at Bill Jones. He's saying, just be calm. It's only a game. Be calm, guys. What a comeback win. I'll tell you, John, you talk about guts and comeback. They were ready for the knockout punch, but they would not be knocked out. And there's a bunch of dejected kids who certainly played their hearts out. And Two seconds left in the game. Warren will go to the line where he has hit seven out of eight. Coach Zulk had a five-point lead with two minutes left in this game. They really they haven't scored since then. John, they really lost. They lost all kinds of ideas as to what to do on the floor with the basketball in that sequence. I really believe they missed their big inside player. He really provided them the kind of guy to get free when things got tough inside. We're talking about Mark Tetzlaff. They just... The pressure came from the defense. Now, as the clock runs down, they really did not get into any kind of offensive flow here. They had no rhythm to their offense at all. And there's the foul right there around. That's about all that he could do at that point. John, it started a lot earlier than that. It started about two minutes ago when Tetzlaff went to the sideline and they could not handle bringing the ball inbounds against the pressure of Jacksonville State. There's Jacksonville. another, another yeah. example, John, of a team that has that great ability to provide a spurt with quickness, how you can quickly get yourself back into a game. They did it with their defense, too, Dick. They put the pressure on, and South Dakota State was just not equal to the challenge in the last two minutes of the game. I mentioned the fact that the team with the poise would come on, and it has been Jacksonville State. This is really heartbreak hotel for Gene Zulk and his kids, and I know when you lay in bed tonight, you sit there as Coach Zulk's going to sit there, and you think about all the possibilities and the way the ways that you had a chance to go home with the gold trophy and to see it just be taken away from you and these but kids here have earned it though but it's been a great game division two championship it's had some drama 30 game win streak on the line mr jones you can celebrate relax coaches never relax do never i'll tell you he's he's got this one in the bank though This would be a real strange L if an L would happen here. Look at, him, look at him. 13 points. I mean, look at him dancing. Look at Melvin Allen. I mean, they're all going bananas. 
That's James Hobbs, the assistant coach. They're calm. The coaches are calm. Schultz will score at the buzzer. But they're one point short. The final. Jacksonville State from Alabama, champions of the NCAA Division II for 1985, 74-73 over San Diego State. Enjoy the celebration. We'll be back to wrap it up right after this. The Gamecocks of Jacksonville State of Alabama have been waiting a long time for this. First trip to the Final Four, and they go home with the first place trophy. 74-73 is the final tonight here in Springfield, Massachusetts. There are a lot of heroes for Jacksonville State. One of them is Melvin Allen. He is over here right now with Dick Vitale. Richard? Well, I'm really here with the star of stars, Melvin Allen. Melvin, it looked like you were going to go home with a silver trophy. Five down, looked like you were in big trouble, 30-game win streak, and all of a sudden you made some big plays, and you're going home with gold. That's right. We, we played hard there down the stretch, and we made a few mistakes, and, and, uh, and uh, South Dakota took advantage of it. And so uh, and down, down the stretch, we started to get things to going for us the way we usually play. And it started clicking into our advantage, and so things just started clicking for us, and we got ahead, and we just kept on clicking. What did you think about when you were five down and about two minutes on a clock, and they lose Tetzlaff, who was giving you all kinds of trouble inside? Well, he was a great player for him. He's been a great player for him all year, and I knew it was going to kind of like hurt him when he left the game. And so we was just going to try to keep on going and keep on going and pushing, and it, and it came out and turned to our advantage. Well, congratulations. Enjoy the victory celebration. You guys have earned it. Any team that wins 31 in a row. Hey, you want the Hoyas and Patrick Ewing? Hey, I tell you, I like to try them in the exhibition <laughs> game, but I don't know if I would like to play them in a regular season game or not. Well, don't get that hungry. John, I'm going to throw it right back to you. All righty. Thank you very much, Nick. Melvin Allen had 20 points. The gentleman beside me, Robert Spurgeon, had 15 points. Robert, you were especially strong in key points in the game tonight. You scrambled, you got some big baskets. Uh, you must feel very proud. Yes, I am. You know, I always try to come out and give us 40, you know, hard, 40 hard minutes. And tonight I tried to go inside, you know, and take a couple off the boards. They was a lot bigger than we were, but I think we was a whole lot stronger inside then. Did you feel a little better when Mr. Tetzlaff fouled out of the ball game? Oh, yes, he was very strong inside. He's, he's a real good player and uh, we was happy to see him fouled out. You guys have been together now two, three years, some of you here at Jacksonville State. You've worked long and hard for this. It's got to be very satisfying. It is. It's just like a dream come true. You know, we've been practicing hard and been waiting this time, and it's, and it's happening. We're glad. Robert Spurgeon, one of the heroes tonight for Jacksonville State. Congratulations. Go get a shower. Enjoy the celebration, because Mr. Dick Vitale is going to sneak back in here as we wind this thing up. 74-73. They're handing out the hardware behind us right now. Uh, an excellent basketball game for both teams. John, I thought it was an excellent played game in that there was so much intensity and emotion on the floor. But we really have to give credit to Jacksonville State University showing so much guts to come from behind. Five down and really in trouble, yet they get out with the win. On the other side, you got to feel bad for South Dakota State University. Their star goes to the benchmark, Tetzlaff. They got a five point lead and they come up empty. Somebody's got to go home with gold, John. Somebody's got to go home with silver. And going home with gold, Jacksonville State. They're the champions of the NCAA Division II for 1985. Congratulations to the Gamecocks. A 74 73 victory over South Dakota State. For Dick Vitale, I'm John Sanders saying good night from Springfield, Massachusetts. Massachusetts.